so it's been a while. Let's catch up. It is approaching the end of 2020. We're in December, officially today, December 1st, 2020, I'm filming this. But first, congrats on making it through possibly one of the strangest, wackiest, most outrageous years in existence. Um, props to you for being here watching this right now in 2020. So the reason I wanted to sit down and talk today, very important, I wanted to tell you my final thoughts on spending a full year in the new Canoe Frontier 12. Now, not, not quite a full year, 10 months. Um, 10 months of pretty substantial use um, uh, for the new Canoe Frontier 12. I put it through its paces. I really tested that thing. I pushed it to what I thought were its limits. And let me tell you, let's, let's, just, let's just get into details. All right, so point number one about the new Canoe Frontier 12. The thing is a beast of a boat. It's big. Um, it's 41 inches wide, 12 feet long. So it is a big, big boat as far as kayaks go. Uh, that width is something else. And it, let me tell you, every inch of width there makes it one of the most stable kayaks I have ever been on. Um, the fact that I am able to stand and fish throughout the day, all day sometimes, comfortably, and not have to worry about you know my balance or uh, falling over or um, doing things you know that I wouldn't normally do standing up in a kayak like turning around, getting a rod, casting, setting the hook, um, things that you constantly in your head are like, is this going to send me into the drink? I never had any of those worries in the Frontier 12, and um, as you can see by some of this footage. I stood in it quite a bit in wind, uh, in current, um, and I fished a lot standing up. So um, there's a lot to be said about that stability. Um, and that's its main selling point, that the stability of that boat is unparalleled. Um, there's not many boats out there uh, in the kayak world that are like it. Um, there are a few, don't get me wrong, there are a few with very similar stabilities, but um, for a paddling kayak, a paddling first kayak, um, yeah, that's point number one. That stability was noticeable right off the bat. Um, the first time in it, it felt rock solid. The next point I want to make that I don't think gets addressed enough for the new Canoe Frontier 12 is its paddle ability. Everyone I talked to before I ordered this boat, including guys on the team, no offense to them, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus here, but they talked about how it doesn't paddle well. Um, of course it's not going to paddle well or as well as people would expect it to coming from something like the Pursuit um, because it's 41 inches wide. It's a barge to get moving but with that being said it was a lot easier than people made it out to be. Now Brandon here's a, here's a couple caveats. The right paddle length, the right stroke, the right type of stroke for the paddle that I was using makes it a pretty easy to manage boat. It's it's a lot more nimble than I anticipated. Um, and it, it does really well in situations that I didn't think it was gonna be good at all. Like paddling up river, into current, into wind, not nearly as bad as I thought. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a pain in the butt, it's a barge. Um, but it does a lot better than other boats I've been in, as well as it exceeded the expectations of the paddling of that boat in my head. Um, it just paddled a lot better than I thought it would. And that was a great surprise to me because I didn't put that motor on right away. I paddled it for, you know, two, three months um, I, while the motor collected dust because I really wanted to see if I needed the motor. And um, with the Pursuit, I didn't need the motor um, because it paddled so well. So um, I put the motor on the Frontier because one, I, and at 41 inches wide, I was confident that it'd be able to be stable enough to do that. And two, um, I didn't think it was gonna paddle that well, so that's why I got the motor. But again, it, it 
defeated all of my expectations as far as paddling goes. And um, just by those clips, you can see I'm paddling upriver into wind. Um, it, it really didn't do that bad of a job. Um, again, right paddle length, correct stroke. It really was beneficial in that, but anyone could do that. Um, anyone can get the right paddle length um, and perform the right paddle stroke to be able to do that. So the next point I want to make about the Frontier is the fact that you can customize it, I think even more so than the Pursuit. Now, don't get me wrong, there's unlimited combinations you can do for any of the new canoe boats because of the open space. Um, they give you a blind canvas and that's what I love about these boats most is that you can truly make it yours. And I don't think there's many other brands out on the market that give you that level of customization to make it truly feel and act the way you want your kayak to be. With the Frontier 12, it was no different. Um, I was able to configure it in a way that worked for me, was able to stand comfortably, was able to place my gear in places that was easy to access, um, as well as run a motor uh, and bring eight to 10 rods with me comfortably. Um, and I think there's obviously some modifications that I did to my own things, like you know adding risers to my black pack, things like that, that allowed me to do that. But because of that open platform on the new canoe, it does allow you to customize it in the way that you see fit for your fishing style. And I think that's really important to um, an ever expanding kayak market nowadays. Everyone gets into a specific kayak for their own reasons, for uh, a certain fishing style, for um, a certain level of stability. And I think the Frontier 12, because of that level of customization, finds itself right at the top with all of those other brands because of its versatility in that sense. Um, so yeah, the customization of that particular boat, the Frontier 12. Um, the fact that you can put a torpedo on it and it'll fly. Um, you can put the bow mount on it and spot lock all day. You can carry so much with you. You can hunt out of it. You can fish out of it. You can take it wherever you want, pretty much. As long as you rig it to fit your needs for those moments, um, it's going to perform exactly the way you would think it would. So yeah, that customization piece of not just the Frontier 12, but new canoes in general is definitely a big point. The last thing I really liked about the new Canoe Frontier 12 for this past year was its ability to outperform itself every time it went out. Um, and what I mean by that is I changed something or I adjusted something or I updated something or upgraded something every single time and it just got better and better and better. And I, I keep finding myself making those micro adjustments here and there to really maximize the potential of that boat. And I can see that leading into the 2021 season um, as I add a larger fish finder, more batteries, uh, dedicated drawer space under the seat where it's not just a bin, it's an actual sliding drawer. So I just see the unlimited potential with those little micro adjustments that I keep building into this boat. And that's what's great, bare bones, you don't need to, you don't need to make all those changes. You don't need to make upgrades. You don't need to change anything and it's still a really solid boat, but those things for me um, really shine and, and help me improve my time in the water. Now, full disclosure, <clears throat> I am on the new canoe team. Um, so I am pro staff for um, the new canoe team. I'm on the tournament team, but with that being said, there are a few drawbacks to this boat, and this is me being completely transparent. Um, these are things that you can read about on the New Canoe Owners Club page on Facebook. You can see them on people's Instagram posts. You can look up other YouTube videos about some of the things that I'm going to talk about um, that I think can in the future be improved by New Canoe to, to truly make this the, the end all be all, um, you know, paddling fishing kayak. And I think that they're listening, which is good. Um, they're taking in feedback. They always are looking for ways to improve, whether it be on the drive, accessories, the boats themselves, um, the shipping process, everything is open for discussion, not just with the team, but with other new canoe owners as well. And that new canoe owners Facebook page is a great place to be able to do that, as well as see people's upgrades, DIY stuff, um, ask questions, 
talk about stuff, go join that group. There's a Frontier Owners group page and a Pursuit Owners group page that I'm a part of as well. I'm pretty sure there's a Flint page as well, but I don't own a Flint yet, so I'm not on there. Um, but check out those Facebook groups because it's there's pretty good advice in there for one, how to fix some of this stuff, as well as how to prevent some of that stuff um, from happening. So let's go over some of the things that I see as shortcomings, not necessarily downfalls, but shortcomings um, and areas that could use improvement over the coming years in the Frontier 12. All right, so I'm gonna talk about two things in the Frontier 12 that I think could be improved over time to truly perfect this platform. And um, the first being the deck bowing issues um, that people seem to be having. Do I have deck bowing issues in my Frontier 12? A little bit. Um, and I think that's just because of the way I've stored it um, and the way that I've uh, used that kayak by standing on it. I'm not a tiny guy. Um, and that definitely affects the way that plastic will bend and warp. Um, and I, I get it, I totally understand that. But a lot of people don't understand that Yes, plastic bends, yes, plastic warps. And there's two reasons for that that people neglect when you know starting these conversations about the deck is warping, the deck is bending, it's not level. And uh, I'll give you one of those reasons right now. So a 12 foot, 41 inch kayak, roto molded kayak could easily weigh 110 pounds. They're out there. Um, there's other brands that make same length, same width kayak, and it's over 100 pounds. With that being said, the new Canoe Frontier 12 is just over 80 pounds. That's a massive difference. That's 20 to 30 pounds different than other brands with similar sizes. And why do they do that? Because of the type of plastic they use and because of the way that plastic is distributed within that mold, you get a little bit, I don't want to say thinner, but you get a, a, a different distribution of that plastic. It's thick and strong everywhere. It's not gonna break, it's not gonna crack easily, but you do get some areas that will bend and warp because it's spread out differently. And that's where that weight reduction comes in. So the, the way they mold it and the way the plastic is uh, rotomolded and formed um, really reduces that weight. And that's such a huge benefit at the end of the day. So would you rather have something that's super rigid super tough um, and really not comfortable at the end of the day and 20 to 30, maybe even 40 pounds heavier than the Frontier 12 is now. I, I, I'm willing to sacrifice that 40 pounds for a little bit of deck bend, um, especially when there's ways to, if it gets bad enough, to fix it. Um, and I, I'm, I might be in the minority here that says that, but uh, again, I car top it on top of a Chevy Tahoe. so. Yes, that 35 pounds that we lose because of that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and there are ways to fix it. There's plenty of ways to look up to fix it. You can leave it in the sun with some weight on it, let it sit, let it, let it relax with some dumbbells in the areas that it is, or um, some, some, some weight right on those areas, the problem areas that you're having, and it'll flatten out over time. Um, so there's ways to adjust it and ways to make it better. And <laughs> I can't wait to edit that in. <laughs> this is a gripe. The second gripe I have with the new Canoe Frontier 12 is the number of scuppers that are in the boat. There's only two. With that being said, I've been in boats with four, six, eight, ten, um, and the pursuit has four? I don't know. Four or six. So it's got more um, than the Frontier 12. The point of the scuppers is that self-bailing piece of it. And I'm a big guy, so I'm going to need that boat to self-bail um, a lot more frequently than someone smaller than me. And, uh, you know, sometimes that really lends itself to a wet ride. Now, that's, uh, that's easily fixed by putting scupper plugs in, but uh, I'm always wary of putting scupper plugs in on the river um, just because that's somewhere where you could easily take water over the bow. Uh, I'm also wary about putting scuppers when you know you're in pretty rough chop. Um, but I, I usually have the scuppers in with the motor on. And uh, 
it, so I, I, it wasn't ever too big of an issue for me because I would say majority of the time this cuppers were in, but it is something to consider when um, thinking about this boat. If you're a bigger guy like me and you're fishing flatter, calmer water, yeah, keep the scupper plugs in and you'll have a dry ride, no problem. Um, and, and it works fine. Um, but if you're a bigger guy like me and you're on rougher water or you're fishing current, um, it's definitely gonna be a little bit of a wetter ride because it's only got those two scuppers to bail that water. So um, there are ways to fix that. Um, and some people have gotten really creative about it. Some people have put, um, you know, little bilges, a little electronic bilges on the back of their boats. It's worked for them. I don't think it's enough of an issue for any type of real problem. Um, I think it's more of a mental thing for me. Um, there's nothing really wrong with a, a kayak holding water. If you're in a kayak, you're gonna get wet. Let's just get that out of the way. Again, I don't see it as an issue to prevent people from buying this boat. It's not that big of a deal, um, but it could be for some. Um, and I think I've managed it pretty well for a guy my size worrying about self bailing because um, there's a flip side to this one as well. <laughs> um, the, the, the carrying capacity of that boat is 600 plus pounds. So you have um, a lot of leeway uh, in that space to really push the limits of what you can bring. So with that being said, that is my honest review of the new Canoe Frontier 12. And by honest, I mean, I gave it to you straight. I gave it to you how I feel about the boat, what I like, what I don't like. Um, and I would say the overall rating of that boat is five stars. I mean, again, disclaimer, I'm on the new canoe team, but doesn't mean that I could hate this boat. I could, I could have loved the pursuit. I love the pursuit, but I love this boat more. I didn't think I could love a, a kayak more than I like the pursuit, but I'm there. Um, I love the Frontier more than the Pursuit because of my size, the capabilities of it because of my size, and the versatility of the customization um, and those micro upgrades that I talked about, that I, micro adjustments and micro upgrades that I keep making to improve my experiences with that boat. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, subscribe, like, whatever. Find me on Instagram, DM me. I'll answer anything you want, open and honest. Um, I'll give you real feedback uh, and, and that's what this is all about. So um, with that being said, New Canoe Frontier 12 review in the books, 2020 almost in the books. Expect a couple more videos, hopefully before the end of 2020 about topics like this. So um, yeah, it's good to be back. Good to be filming a video again. Bye.